Lynn just gave me another lottery ticket. Maybe I'm going to win this week. She plays Powerball. Oh. You know, this week she's playing Mega Millions. $400 million. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something daring. When I win, I will share. Okay, so if I hit big tomorrow, Everybody here, and you have them on, on camera, JP. Everybody up here in Washington are going to get a cut. Yeah. Yeah, so we can put our feet up and go like, yeah. <laughs> and take a day off, right? We won't take a day off, will we? No, we'll work even harder. All right. That'll help. That'll help because we're like, I'm hoping. That'll be fun. Huh? So many places to get done. So many words, so little time. So many words. So does anybody have any, uh, aside from me, winning the Mega Millions tomorrow? How you doing, Deborah? Don't mean to single you out, I'm sorry. What? Is that, is that, is that all right to ask you? Yeah, sure, it's fine. How's it going? Uh, it's frustrating. Yeah. Join the club. You're not alone. Are you, do you have like a little mark on your forehead where you bang your head against the wall? Is that why you have your hair down like this? I have a mark. I have a mark. You can't see it. I bang my head against the wall. Anybody else? Yes, Right. Um, so Jeremy's talking about asking a question about what what are the ethics of writing about a, a historical person, um, and there are certain you know it's not a known person, it's not someone who's known by all. It's maybe a, 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 a character who's not as well known. And what are the ethics of that? I would say um, because, you see, there's the person, like they say about, you know, Jesus. There's Jesus and then there's the historical Jesus. You know, I don't, you know. So there's, there's, but there's the person and then there's the character. So try to be, you know, try to take what you know of the person. Do your research. Do as much research as you think you need to do. Okay, not every single thing if you don't feel like you need it. But do some research, right? Do some. Okay. And then the character, which is different from the person, is going to have their own thing that they want. Right? And you're going to have to listen to that. You know? So it's rare that you can sort of like just do your own thing with these characters. You know? Because they're going to grab you like, you know, Everett's character. Everybody by the neck, and make it difficult, you know? Um, and, and they will do that, so you have to be respectful about these characters. Um, and I would say just try to listen more than you talk. Ask them, so why are you here? Why are you in my play? What do you want? What can I do for you? What can you do for you? That's a good thing to ask a character. You know, I, I was looking at one of these books, you know, of these helpful writing books. I'm sure it's a great book and everything. But I was reading it and going, they, you know, they were asking, telling you to ask your character certain questions. Like, the last time I ever kissed the man was, you know, these questions. And I'm thinking, okay, interesting, interesting. Um, but it's also really helpful to just ask your characters even more personal. Yeah, what can I do for you? Just off the map questions. You know, um, what can I do? How can I help you? Why are you here? What do you want to tell me? Why are you talking? Why are you talking? What have I done wrong? Where have I gone? You know, what's getting in the way of me and your story that you want to tell? You showed up for a reason. Why? You know. Okay. And so it's kind of the same as with any character, but you need to do the research some, and you don't need to stick so closely to the, the already found information. I don't think so. Sounds like it's a good. Second. Anybody else? Yes.
know exactly, I'm looking at I know exactly that feeling. There's a wall behind you. Is there blood on the wall? Have you been pounding your head against that wall? In your mind, you know, it's just... Yeah, right. For years. What's your name, remind me? Crystal. So, Crystal, is your first time here? Oh, well, good. That's great, because I, I was like, wow, you see, I don't know you. Um, great, Crystal, great question. That's a really great question. Um, so, Crystal has the beginning of her play. She's got three scenes, and then she knows the end. And you'd think you could just kind of string a little bit along, but something is something is going. I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm not going to do this to you, but well, let's just do it. Let's just see what it like. I'm going to put my hand. Something's going like. You're trying to walk forward, and it's going. No, you can't. And it's you. It's probably not on your knee. Probably on your face. Right? So you're trying to walk forward and it has its hand in your face and it's pushing you back. And what is that? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, but I know that we all, I mean, it's resistance. That's what it is, right? But what do we do about it? Right? And there's so many theories and so many books, and I, I love reading books about what to do about this, because I, it happens to me all the time. I love reading. So what do we do about this? And you've been working on it for years. And what do you do? So, you have some choices. Let's see. You could, yeah. Turn off the lights and take a nap. <laughs> That's a real choice. I've done that many times. You could quit. So we're, we're taking your temperature. You could quit. What do you think, Crystal? You want to quit? Okay. So that's what your gut says. Your gut says, no, I don't want to quit. Okay. You could, like, um, yeah, put it aside and do something else. You could? Okay, possible? Possible? What do you think? It's not like, right, right. Because often I experience writing as people think, oh, it's this blissful thing. I experience it like a, the flu. It's like, oh, man, it's like the flu. You know what I mean? And so it's better when it's on the page and it doesn't feel like the flu anymore. You know? So, right, so it's gnawing on. It's been gnawing for years. You could. Right? Poorly. You know? Because I, sometimes I think that's what's in the way. It's like your ability as a writer, have you written things before? Okay, see, no, see. So your ability as a writer, right, is better than your ability to write this piece. So you're like, you know, big. You're like Alice in Wonderland. You're like, shit, how am I going to get in there? <laughs> That's not what she said. But in my version, Alice in Harlem. Shit, how am I going to get in there? Damn, man, that hole's too small. Right, OK. So that's what she says, right? So this is this just like, and you don't want it. Because it, it, it feels like shitty writing. And you know what? It probably is. It's shitty writing, so you have to sort of go, I'm going to be a really shitty writer for the next, whatever, 50 pages. I'm going to be really shitty. And that's hard when you're good. You know, when you know, you know, and, you, and maybe you, you're good and maybe you can't tolerate shitty writing. It's hard. And maybe you, you're the kind of writer, because some writers don't know when they're writing poorly. And if you're the kind of writer who does know, then it's really hard. It's like, oh, fuck, fuck shit, man, this is like crap. Look, the dialogue is lame, the plot is lame. I was telling a friend, I was hanging out with a friend the other night. I was saying I'm writing, I'm working on something. I said, man, it feels like I'm just clawing away at the side of my face ah, when I'm writing. Ah. It's not fun. Why do I want to do that? You know? But that's what it feels like sometimes. So I would say maybe 
if you just allow yourself to be a really shitty writer. Yeah. For like, how many pages do you think it's going to be when it's done? 90. Okay. Okay. Or, or 87. Okay, great. Okay, and you know, do you know like a C? Can you figure out the C? It's like C1, C2, C3 you have, the end you have. What's in the middle? Do you kind of know? Yeah. Right. This happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, and the end. Right? Can you write it out on cards? Index cards? You have your magic book. Okay, but can you can you write? Can you? So how many? So you have like maybe ten seats. Great. So you're gonna have ten index cards. Three by five. You can hold them in your hand, right? So you're gonna write just this happens. Next card. Then this happens. And this happens. And then the end. This happens. And you're gonna have ten index cards, and you're gonna put them in your magic book. And you're just gonna write those scenes, and they're gonna be shitty. And you're going to get to the end. And then you're going to put it away. And it's going to magically rewrite itself. And next time you pick it up, you're going to read it and go, Oh, I know how to fix this. You know, I think that's what we have to, a lot of times, that's the resistance. The resistance is, you don't want to be shitty. You know what I mean? It pushes, it pushes against you because you know, you know, that it can be, what it can be. And sometimes knowing that something can be gets in the way of just having it be anything. We learn that lesson daily. You know? So maybe you can try to do that. Take 10 cards, put them in your magic book. So get out of, you know, so use your book, but get out of it a little bit. Just loosen it up a little bit. You know, get it on card. If it's more than 10 scenes, use more than 10 cards. I'm not saying use 10 cards. You know what I mean? If it's 15 scenes, Get 15 cards, whatever it is. Walk around with them, talk to yourself as you're walking around. This is the story, this is the story. And set a time every day and write for maybe an hour a day. And just write those scenes and get to the end. Okay? Just, just do it. And if you fall on your, you know, you're not alone. I'm here, Everett's here. <laughs> See, Everett's struggling, I'm struggling, you know? Get Lynn, see? See? It's like part of the horrible thing. <laughs> it's horrible. It is. It's a horrible thing. It is. Anybody else? No? Let's put it down. It's a cold, dark, windy winter night. It's horrible. Yes, Carol. Asylum and 
there are beds on both sides and there's an aisle through the middle. And when, you walk, when you step at, you're standing at the door and there's beds on this side and beds on this side, and you stand at the door and all of a sudden all the people in the bed start yelling things at me. Like horrible things. You know. All right? But there's an aisle through. And you, your, your job as a writer is just to walk through the aisle. Sometimes you run to, to get to the door on the other side. And they're screaming constantly. They're all, they're chained in their beds, so they can't get up and like jump or anything. <laughs>
And maybe there's only one way to be bad. I don't know. Maybe there's so many different ways to be bad. I think there's so many different ways to be bad, too. There's so many different ways to be a good writer. I just think you have to find it. It's kind of like you turn, I start, I turn off my head and just get into the, ask my characters, what can I do for you? Not, what can I say about the world? I don't give a fuck. I mean, really, excuse me. No, I don't give a fuck. What I have to say about the world, you know, blah, 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 me, me, me. I don't care. I'm really interested in how can I serve the story? Because the story is much bigger than me. It's huge. And if I can just serve the story, then I can be effective. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Yeah. Because here I am. At your service. Oh, definitely. Yeah. They are not at my service. I'm very clear. My characters are. They are not at my service. I'm at their service. I am doing, I am bringing them to the world. You know? So it's a different relationship, you know? I mean, but that's just my experience. That's in my experience. Different writers have a different. Just 
Party and baby. 